Welcome back everybody to this week's training video. This week we're going to take things a little bit different and we're going to give you a sneak peek from our best selling PLC programming for industry training course. Now on this video what we're going to do is we're going to show you the solution to one of the real world exercises that we give you on the training course which is our one push button exercise. This is where we have to control one output with one push button. That means starting and stopping the output with just one input signal. How do we do this? Well, we're going to show you on this video. Now, before we get started with this week's video, if you're looking to learn PLC programming from scratch, then what I'd recommend you doing is having a look at our PLC programming for industry training course, this chap that's right here. Now on our PLC programming for industry training course, we're going to give you access to over 40 PLC programming tutorials and over 15 real world exercises that will allow you to practice what you've been taught throughout the training course. Not only that, but when you enroll, you also get access to real PLC programming software and the real PLC like the ones behind me. This means that you can then connect to our training servers, write your PLC programs, download your PLC programs and then test your PLC programs on a live PLC training system. This gives you crucial experience that you need when working with real PLCs in industry. So if you're looking to go ahead and further your skill set this year, then all you need to do is just go to www.scantime.co.uk and then select e-learning at the top and then select our PLC programming for industry training course. After that, all you need to then do is select add to cart and then go to the checkout to create your MyScantime account and enroll on the training course today. Once you've enrolled, the course is then yours to keep and you'll have access to it 24-7, 365 days a year. Once you've completed the training course, you'll still have access to all of the course material, which means if you want to refresh your memory on any certain subject, feel free to do so. Not only that, but you'll also receive a certificate through the post highlighting your newly acquired skills. So like I say, if you want to get started, just go to our website www.scantime.co.uk, select add to cart when you go to our PLC programming for industry training course, and then head to the checkout. And we look forward to having you on board. Enjoy the video, guys. I'll see you next week. Welcome back everybody, what we're going to do now is going to have a look at the solution for that one push button control. So again, just to go over the exercise, I've got one output and I've got one push button. What I want to do is press that button once, the output turns on, press the button again, the output then turns off. And the exercise seemed fairly simple, but if you really think about it, there's some intricacies in there that we need to try and overcome inside of the program. So let's have a look at how we would design this. Now this program is going to be designed in three networks. I'm going to explain why. So if you think about this exercise, if we had two push buttons, a start and a stop, the design is fairly straightforward. We would just use a start stop latch. Now, what we want to do inside of the PLC program is really mimic that start stop latch because the start stop latch is fundamental. It's the basics. Everybody knows what the start stop latch is and how it works. So what I'm going to do is inside of network three here, I'm just going to quickly draft up the start stop latch. I'm just going to use, for example, $200. I'm then going to use 200.01 and what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on my output and in my case it's 10.0 and if you're using the PLC it'll also be 10.0. I'm going to branch this down, add in another contact 10.00 like so. Okay, let's give this an address right now. So where we see 200.00 I'm going to call this our start signal because that's what that would be. 200.01 is our stop signal and in this exercise 10.00 is our motor run signal like so now the reason why we're designing a latch is because it's easily recognizable everyone knows how that operates how that works the problem is though we don't have a start and a stop we have a start stop so what do we do well if we think about this we can create our own we can create our own start signal we can create our own stop signal and we just use conditions to trigger when we want to start the system and when we want to stop the system let's have a think about how these two contacts should operate how long does that contact 200.00 need to be on for if we think about it it only needs to be on for one plc scan for that motor to run same with our stop signal what in the program gives us a, a one PLC scan pulse? Well, 
but we're on the topic at the moment, the DIFU, the Differential Up or the One Shot Pulse Positive Signal. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to add in a normally open contact and I'm going to tie this to our input 0.00, .00. and this here is going to be our start stop signal. There we go. And we're going to tie this one to our diffu. So let's grab the function, let's add this in and let's give us our diffu and we're going to trigger 200.00 our start signal. So let's think about how this works. When the operator presses the push button 0.00, .00 it'll detect the rising edge and it'll turn on our start signal for one PLC scan. The program will turn on that contact, closing the contact for one PLC scan and that there will enable our motor run latch. So our process, our motor will latch on and begin to run. Now what we need to do is work out how we need to stop the system. So if we think about this, the operator is going to press this button again. It's going to trigger 200.00 again. And what we want to do is we want to trigger this stop signal when it does so. So if I put in here our normally open contact to 200.00 and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put over a coil here and there's a reason for that and that there is going to be my stop signal like so. What we've got here is when the operator presses the start stop push button initially, doesn't matter how long he holds it down for, it's going to trigger don't worry about this, it's going to trigger our 200.00 for one PLC scan. The program is going to come down and the network 2, it's going to tell us, right, 200.00 needs to close. We need a condition in here to say, don't enable the stop signal just yet because the process isn't running or the motor isn't running. It'll then bypass network 2 and it'll come into network 3 and it will enable the 200.00 contact in network 3. The stop signal will currently be off, that there will be closed still, and the motor run signal will then turn on and latch on. The next time the operator presses the start stop push button, 200.00 triggers again, this contact here will close and now our condition will tell us, now you can stop it. That then triggers our stop signal and that then opens up our contact and resets our process latch or resets our motor run latch. So what is this condition going to be? This is just telling me that network 2 is invalid, so I need to complete it first of all. So don't worry about that. So what is our condition going to be inside of here? Well, if you think about it, when do you want to stop the motor? When the motor is on. So if I type in here 10.00 and I say OK to that, that there is the correct design. When we press our start stop push button initially, 200.00 will turn on. This contact here will close, but the motor currently isn't running. So this network gets effectively ignored. It comes down at the network three, it'll close this contact here. And because our 200.01 contact is still closed, it's off currently, it'll then run our motor signal. Now our motor run signal closes. When we press our start stop push button again, the diffu triggers our start signal for one PLC scan. This contact here turns on, and because our motor is currently running, our stop signal is now enabled. Now what we can do just for added safety is we can put in a condition just before the start signal, and we can say, don't trigger the start signal in this network if the motor is currently running, just as an extra bit of safety. So to do that, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add in a column, so if I just go to edit and then I go to insert column, it'll add another column sort of before that contact. I can then grab my normally closed contact here and I can tie this to my 10.00 output. And then just click outside of there, it'll reformat the network. So the way this is working here is we can only trigger this start signal if the motor is off. If the motor is on, this contact will be opened and our start signal can't be triggered until the motor turns off again. So let's have a go at testing this out. Let's go to monitor mode. Let's go to online download. Say yes to that. Say okay to that. Say yes to that. Yes to that. And okay to that. Right, now we're ready to go. So if we look at this process right now, 
the motor is off so this contact is closed and this is going to energize when our start signal is going to turn on so what we're going to do is going to press our start push button i'm going to force this on we're going to say yes to this and our motor should turn on there you go our start stop push button is still held in at the moment but our differential up contact is only triggered once so our motor run signal is now on and we can see inside of network 2 the motor run signal is now on the next time we trigger this 200.00 differential up signal it'll then trigger the stop and that will then break our circuit so if i just force reset and then force it on again now it stops it if i force reset and then force it on again there it sets it force reset and then force set again finally and that there resets it once again that there is our one push button control hope you guys have enjoyed it